People buy cars for all kinds of reasons. Sometimes it's love at first sight. Sometimes it's what lies beneath the surface. But sometimes the wrong name can be a real turnoff. Tucson. It's a picturesque city in Arizona and it supports the theme of wide open spaces and getting away from it all. And quite frankly, that's perfect for an SUV. Now, Cougar. Well, it's a stylized name and it makes you think of a predatory animal or perhaps even this mountain lion. And that never really worked. So why don't we try Escape? Because it too supports a theme of getting away from it all, of wide open spaces and the spirit of adventure. Makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? The 2017 Hyundai Tucson is one of the top selling mid-size SUVs in the country, and deservedly so. It's well appointed, practical, comfortable and good value. Plus it has a cool name. This is the range-topping Highlander model with a 1.6-litre turbocharged petrol engine and all-wheel drive. The 2017 Ford Escape largely flew under the radar under its old name. But with a fresh new identity and a stack of new features, could the Escape come back into the focus of buyers? Our car is the top-spec titanium with a 2-litre turbo petrol engine and all-wheel drive. These cars are about 45k list and the Hyundai is retailing for about 500 bucks more than the Escape. That's right, but they've both got premium paint and that one's got the optional driver assistance package which puts the equation the other way around. So it makes them about 50k yep. on the road and we both agree that that technology pack should be standard on the top spec Escape. Absolutely. Race here. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's not really much of a spectator sport, is it? Uh, no, not really. But what is important is what people buy these cars for, and that is how much stuff you can actually get into the back. Well, to compare these cars in real world terms, we've got everything you need for, say, a daddy-daughter weekend away to put in the back. Are you sure? That looks like a lot of stuff. Paul, you have no idea, man. That's not even half of it. OK, so the Escape has 406 litres that expands to a massive 1,600. While the Tucson starts off with more, at 488 litres, it only expands to 1,500. Bottom line though, both cars have enough room to store all our items, but the Tucson scores a full-size spare wheel to the Escape's Space Saver. There's not a great deal of legroom back here. My knees are hard up against the seat, but there is plenty of toe room and headroom as well. You also get a centre armrest with cup holders, but the thing that kids are going to love is this. It's a tray table that folds out of the seat. It is a little bit flimsy, but it has a cup holder for kids' drinks or Dad's Sunday morning coffee. You'll also find rear air vents and a 12-volt power outlet. Well, there is a stack of room in the back of the Tucson. My knees, toes and head have all got plenty of space. There's a central armrest with cup holders and a set of vents in the centre console. But that's it. No 12-volt, no USB. Mate, it is noticeably bigger in there. Mm. That Escape is comfy and the seats recline, but this looks like a much more usable cabin. No, you're right. These seats recline as well, which kind of seals the deal. Anyway, no use lounging around all day. Let's hit the road. The 1.6 turbo in this Hyundai is a pretty decent little unit. 130 kilowatts at 5,500 RPM and 265 newton metres from just 1,500 RPM make it nice and usable and pretty standard for the segment. But it's not a patch on the EcoBoost in the Ford. This 2-litre turbo has 178 kilowatts of power. That's more than a Golf GTI. And with 345 newton metres of torque, it's pretty easy to do this. <laughs> it looks like Paul's found the throttle. Yeah, it's fun, but it's pretty thirsty. Ford reckons it'll do 8.6 litres per 100 kilometres, but I'm seeing over 12. Hyundai claims 7.7 .7 litres per 100, and this one's sitting happily at around 8. Now, that's helped in part by the smaller engine, but also the seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, which relaxes into as high a gear as possible to aid efficiency. It's not a bad unit. It's pretty smooth, certainly on the move, although you do get some of that elastic behaviour, especially around town. It's certainly not the worst we've seen. Ford's taken a more traditional approach with the Escape using a conventional six-speed automatic gearbox. While it's not as sharp as the Hyundai, it is quick to react and results in a sportier drive. Now, both cars ride on 19-inch wheels. 
But even considering that, the Hyundai is nothing short of excellent. Its locally tuned suspension is comfortable and compliant, especially out here on some of these country roads. Around town, over things like speed humps, it feels like you're being carried by an army of tiny ants. Not quite the same here, though. It feels like we're being carried over an army of grasshoppers instead. While the Escape feels a bit tighter and more energetic when it's tipped into corners, it can translate to bigger bumps through the cabin, whereas the Tucson absorbs them really nicely. Now, being range-topping models, both of our cars are very well equipped, and they include panoramic sunroofs, leather seats, and touchscreen multimedia systems. The Escape also gets DAV digital radio and Apple CarPlay over the Tucson where the Hyundai gets ventilated seats and plenty of safety equipment as standard, although there is no adaptive cruise control. A feature the Escape gets as part of its optional tech pack. But it's not always what you've got, but how you use it. While this LCD screen in the centre here works really well, the ergonomics around the cabin can be a little bit fiddly at times, but it is all saved by the SYNC 3 system, which is great to use. And what's with this baseball cap shade? It does protect the screen from glare, but it looks a bit silly. The Tucson does have a better cockpit layout, although some of the features are a little bit simplistic and, dare I say, boring. It is easy to see why this car has been so popular with buyers, though. There is good storage, the materials themselves are really nice, and it is quite relaxing and easy to drive. Whereas this guy's a bit funkier and, dare I say it, more fun. Well, this is going to be a tough one, Paulie. Both are really good cars. The Escape is heaps of fun to drive. The Tucson's practical and cheaper to buy, but the Escape is way cheaper to service. Yeah, you're right. The six-month service intervals on the uh, Hyundai aren't really ideal. And while they're both aimed at the same kind of buyer, both really take the approach from different angles. But I suppose the bigger question for today is, is the new Escape now a relevant proposition for buyers? Because the old car is the Cougar. Well, it probably wouldn't have got a look in, but this new one, it really is that good. That's it, the Escape is fantastic, but we both know that the top spec isn't where you want to be in this SUV segment. You want to go about mid-level. No, you're right. Uh, a mid-level grade, front drive, petrol engine. We've got a new CX-5, there's Tiguan and Sportage. These two cars makes that part of the segment a really exciting battleground, which will cross in due course. Well, for buyers who are looking for the S in their SUV, the 2017 Ford Escape has got a great engine, really good driving dynamics, and yet is still comfortable and plenty practical. And if you're looking for the U, the utility in SUV, you're going to want the Tucson because of its great ride, practicality, and zippiness around town. So, Paulie, money on the table today. Which one would you take home? Well, I don't have any kits, as far as I'm aware, so it's going to be the Ford Escape. I reckon it has been the all-rounder today. You know, it's funny, even though I do have children, well, an extra one now, and that has got more space, I'd still go the Escape as well. It really is a lot of fun. It's still very practical yeah. and very usable. And I've got to say, I've been really impressed.